before almost everybody had an HD camera in their pocket, there were camcorders. Before digital came along, analog and tape. There were home movies way before that, and they were truly movies shot on film. What's old is new again. I was a film student long, long ago. Since then, I've made my living shooting video. But I've always had a desire, an urge, to shoot film again. So come with me on my double eight adventure. It seems as if, in this digital world, there is a new mystique to analog and what came before. From select A-list filmmakers shooting IMAX to artist hipsters shooting Super 8, there is a heightened interest in film, which is great. Many famous movie makers started young with the family camera. Well-built, wind-up, regular 8 cameras like the Revere Double Eight Model 88 were the go-to mid-century home movie cameras. Eastman Kodak came up with Standard 8 during the Great Depression and started selling the cost-cutting format in 1932. This regular 8 format was also called Double Eight because it was 16 millimeters wide and once an eight millimeter half was shot, the roll could be flipped and the other eight could be used. Twice the pictures out of a roll of film. If you were lucky, that would be about five minutes of memories preserved on film. Following World War II and the baby boom, lots of families got eight millimeter cameras to roll on the good times. The Revere Camera Company of Chicago, Illinois manufactured Revere 8 Model 88 cameras from 1940 to 1946. With its fixed wool and sack 13 millimeter lens and its parallax viewfinder, it's a basic, solidly constructed little camera. I bought mine online from shopgoodwill.com for $20. It came in its original box and seemed to be in good working order. As my interest and excitement in 8mm has grown, so has my collection of inexpensive vintage cameras. My wonderful family gifted me a roll of film with processing and a digital scan included from the Film Photography Project. I have found FPP to be an excellent source of information. I decided to start this amateur movie making adventure with the most basic and fundamental camera that seemed to be in the best shape. That is how I chose the Model 88. Fortunately, some of my old cameras came with exposed film, so I could practice loading the film and also test the camera out. The real test would be my first 8mm shoot with this camera that had not been serviced or used in decades. To be honest, it made me anxious with my gift that cost four times the camera. I hadn't used a motion picture camera since college over 25 years ago. Even though I use a professional video camera at least five days a week, film, I admit, is a little intimidating. That was another reason for using the Revere and deciding to use it on a consistently sunny day. I chose FPP's Cine 8 BW40 reversal film for shooting outside and reversal which is positive so I could use my projector with the developed film. I followed FPP's advice and ignored the exposure guide on the side of the old camera and used their guide instead. I chose a subject matter for my silent short film. It would be trains. I like how linear trains are and it seemed like a good match for my linear analog filming experience. I'm also amused by seeing new things like light rail trains captured in old looking film. I went to the Oregon Rail Heritage Center in southeast Portland. It's a great place to visit if you are into locomotives. It's also where railways, light rail and streetcars converge near the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. 
Now, unlike digital, where you can record way more than you'll ever need and experiment until you get the shot you want, I knew I had to be thoughtful and plan ahead to conserve film. I also tried to edit in camera for the same reason. I shot 16 frames per second, as it seems that is most standard for 8mm projectors. The wind down of the Revere was pretty consistent, but ran out quicker than expected and slowed near the end, so I really tried to wind it up in between every shot. Something I really liked about using a fixed lens was zooming with my feet and moving the camera for other shots. It was another way to really be engaged with this immersive experience. Now it wasn't all smooth sailing. I forgot to adjust my footage counter before starting to shoot. I thought, stay calm. The camera will sound different when it runs out of film. But even though I thought the sound changed and it felt different, I was mistaken and flashed a portion of the film. I panicked, I swore, I closed the camera quickly and rolled and rolled until I knew the first side was done. Time to switch the roll over. Words of advice for you and my future self. Plan your film change ahead and practice, practice, practice. I fumbled the film, hoping and praying it was seated properly behind the pressure plate and having adequate loops on both sides. Camera closed up and on to take more pictures. Having flashed the footage and having a nerve-wracking reel change had me at what the heck stage. This may all be a bust, but there is half a roll to go, so I just had fun with rolling on the freight train handheld and hoping for the best. Once back home, I placed the spent roll in the can clearly labeled it and wrote the information down and sent it back to the film photography project. Then I tried to let go of my expectations and waited. About a month later, the developed film was back with a digital scan on a memory stick. Here it is, my first standard eight film. Real, real rails.
My double eight adventure was quite the experience. Nerve wracking, exciting, pretty amazing. It's old fashioned, it's hard, you have to be patient, but it's an experience I think I'm going to do again. I hope you go on a double eight adventure too. Next time I take an eight millimeter adventure, it will be with the Canon Reflex Zoom 8 from 1959. This really well built reflex camera with a fast lens that goes from f 1.4 to f22 and zooms from 10 millimeters to 40 millimeters will be just the one to use with color film.